All right, everybody, we are back. Day two, part two. Fate Stay Night. Let's play. Let's get it. Nice flash transition. So, after a breakfast, I clearly explained my immediate plans. You're actually going to school? What the fuck? Nani the fuck, Archer? You got a fucking problem with that, bitch? You wanna square up? Fucking pussy cunt? Listen, I may be a pussy fart cunt, but it's just... Archer hesitates but does not object. He must have realized yesterday that I'm not the type to take back my decisions. I can kind of tell without saying so. Archer is sarcastic, but he has an honest side to him, so it seems he won't complain about something he's accepted. Yes, in other words, he's faithful in an awkward way. This is my conclusion, no, more of an intuition, after watching Archer from all of yesterday. スタニーに行きますたを警戒しなくてはならない。学校と呼ばは不意の襲撃に備えにくい場所だろ。そんなことはないけどね。いいいいあっちゃ。私はマスターになったからって今までの生活を変える気はないわ。それにマスター同士の
it's only natural for a lot of characters to be weak when this series starts. That's the point of progressing them. Why the fuck do people not like Shiro? Answer me this. Do you like Shiro or do you not? Do you not? And why? Okay? I don't care what side you choose, just give me a good explanation as to why you don't or you do like him. Or just say, or just say, I don't fucking know, but if you say you don't like him especially, I want a good reason why he sucks. Because I don't think he sucks at all. He's a good character. Might not be, like, the greatest MC in the world, but he's fucking good. He's good. Anyway. Well, for now at least. I say I like him more than... <coughs> I like him more than Tono Shiki from Tsukihime. That's my opinion. And anyway, for now at least. Well, Rin, there are always exceptions. What if there is a Majutsu at your school that you don't know about? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that, bitch. You about to get spooked. Like I did when I wanted Tama Lancer and got Fion Mac Cum Hale with two L's. Twice. Do you understand? Your caution is just needless worrying. It's completely insolent. Impossible. Haha, <laughs> that is why this is only a hypothetical scenario. There's always another side to these things. I'm saying that when it does. Don't blame that shit on me, bitch. Archer smiles dryly. Just that action makes me want to take it out on him. But if I did, I would be late for school. Now actually, I want to know this. Do you prefer me to like... So there's three ways I can really... I shouldn't really be asking because I'm going to bulk record a lot of these, but like I've kind of at a crossroad. Like sometimes I want to just sit and let them speak and not interrupt them and then just let them speak. And then the next time I talk is when I'm reading. If I have either any commentary in between or if, you know, once they start narrating it or I, I let them talk and then I repeat their line or I just fucking talk over them. I, I don't know. I'm kind of like chosen three different styles of commentating this. I feel like a mix of them, like what I've been doing, is the most appropriate. I'm trying not to talk over them too much because I like the voice acting, and I'm sure you guys do too, but uh, I feel like it might be a little boring if I just never talk, like never repeat their lines. And I just, I, I don't know. That's just my take on it because it's a less play. It's not a walkthrough where there's no commentary involved. So I don't want to be too quiet even if they're talking a lot. But at the same time, this is a game where I said I wouldn't talk out of my ass as much and I kind of want to do it more seriously. So this is a more serious. This is probably the most serious Let's Play, even though I have fucked around a decent amount in the commentating game. But this is probably the most serious Let's Play I've ever done uh, just because I take this game seriously. It's not like Pokemon Mystic Cr fucking Legends where it's a fucking flawed ass shitty mistranslated ROM hack and I'm just making fun of it. Like I genuinely want to absorb this story. So. I'm taking it seriously, so just know it has a more serious dynamic to it than my other series. Anyway, enough of my tangent. Archer smiles dryly, just that action makes me want to take it out on him. But if I did, I would be late for school. それでは行こうか、リブ。君の学びはまだ30分。そろそろ出なければ間に合わない時間帯だ。うん、オッケー。オッケー、ミスターエミアーチャ。もしもの話って。ああ、私も驚いている。いや、何事も決意をつけておく
完全にではないがすでに準備は始まっているようだな Yep. You should know what that is too if you've watched the anime. What they're talking about, what's gonna happen. Because the anime explores that as well. If he's doing this so smoothly, it must be a real big shot. <laughs> Or a complete amateur. A powder field that lets others notice. The abnormality is only third class. To be th first class, it has to be hidden until it's activated. Second class. <laughs> I would say, from my hypothesis, it's first class, but they're not even trying to hide it. But that's just me. Who knows? I don't care if he's third or first class, I'll kick his ass anyway. That basically translates to what I said. I walk angrily. Through the schoolyard, as a mudget sum about to mince, not about to mince words, but I can't be satisfied until I properly punish the creator of this boundary field. Kara no Kyokai. <laughs> After second period, while walking from the ba uh, back from the music room, I see a tantalizing, titillated first year student walking unsteadily. The student is carrying some stack of papers, and it looks like she's having trouble. <laughs> I'll help Sakura, even though she said Sakura. <laughs> okay, you can't resist how cute Sakura is. Her voice is cute, her demeanor is cute, her face is cute, her body is cute. She is radiating cute. She is precious. You need to protect this. I will protect her, alright? Sakura is fucking dope. Printo? Man. Thank you. You see, this is real shit right here. You must help Sakura. She's precious, man. You can't be carrying like 50 books like that. That is very much like him. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. My teachers just point out the mistake. If they even notice it, if the mistake is relevant enough to the point where it affects your ability to take the test properly, they'll just point it out during the test. They'll be like, hey, there's a fucking mistake on number nine, section B, C. Like, this fucking word. Dong actually should have said dildo. Now, that'll completely change the way you approach this problem, so I'm just gonna write this shit on the board. Dong is dildo. Alright, good luck, my compatriots. And, yeah, pretty much. Anyway. What a legend. They must be perfect gods that have evolved past shitting, like Kim Jong Un. XD. I just find it so crazy that that dude actually tries to brainwash his nation into believing that he doesn't shit and he's created the hamburger and many other things. Have you ever researched that shit? Just like watch videos on it and know th some of those facts. It's, it's pretty hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. He goes too far though. You'll realize soon too. Kuzuki is uh, as stubborn as a rock or a mountain. And that is why he's evolved past shitting. He is now titting. Ma'am. I think that, but I also think he's not bad this way. At our school, there's a teacher liked by all students and a teacher feared by all students. The balance between the two works so well that I think Kuzuki Sensei is a good disciplinarian. He's the stick in the carrot and a stick approach. 
<laughs> he teaches ethics. That's a little ironic. Did Gilgamesh hit or not? She would never allow such a thing. She is too precious. How dare you ask her that question? And by her, that question, I mean what I asked. I feel like you find out really what the depth of that conversation was in Heaven's Feel. Because you're not really going to... Yeah, you're not really going to get into what Gilgamesh was telling her until you get to Heaven's Feel, so it's interesting. I know, generally know what happens at Heaven's Feel, but even I, I don't know that. So, I'm curious to see what the fuck he was telling her. It has to be something about what, what's going to transpire. I know enough to kind of, you know dabble with what he was telling her but I don't know exactly what he told her so it's interesting ah, so she ran away <laughs> and she cares about you Atene? I pass the handouts back to Sakura. As I start to head back to my classroom, I pause. Aww, you care. Aww, that's a fucking lie. Please help her, Shiro. Oh, please kill Shinji already. I can't wait to see him die in all three routes. If she says that with such a smile, I can't say anything else. I bid her goodbye and once more turn my back onto the familiar junior. <sighs> On the... The day ends. Students leave the classroom and the building gets darker by the second. The sun will set soon. When the red sun sets and night falls, there should be no one left in the school. Let's begin, Achia. Mm. Okay. I dress my invisible partner. Archer must understand as I sense him nodding. A boundary field is something that protects its caster. You could call it a geographical magic, in which one knits a line of magic across a land to change the interior. Infinite different effects are possible within a boundary field. There are all sorts of boundary fields, from ones that conceal the area from within people's eyes, to those that limit the use of magic within them. And the most aggressive of all are those that oppress life forms within them. That is a type that has been laid out over our school. It is not yet complete, but once it is, everyone in the school should fall unconscious. But something like this won't affect me. After all, a boundary field is something targeted not at me, but at the place I'm in. Such an indirect magical intervention has no effect on Magi, who have magical energy throughout their bodies. A weak current floating through the air will only be repelled by a strong current like myself. So this boundary field is a different intention. I don't know what kind of person set up this boundary field, but his intention is not that to defeat a master. It's hard to believe, but his target is everyone in this school. He's trying to use them as fuel. There's only one reason to do something like that. Unbelievably, this guy is... a cunt. I search the school building and emerge onto the rooftop to finish. It's dark outside. It's 8 o'clock now, way past the school closing time, which is 6. The only people still in the school are me and Archer. Archer and I. An eight-stroke mark is openly drawn on the rooftop. This purplish-red character, only visible to Magi, is something I have seen, never seen before. Engraved with something unknown. 
The person who set this set up this boundary field didn't think about anything. He didn't think, but the boundary field is bound with amazing skill. I can temporarily drain the magical energy from this boundary field, but I cannot eliminate the boundary field itself. The boundary field can be reactivated by just having the caster put more magical energy into it again. Archer says nothing. He has been quiet ever since we came out onto the rooftop. Probably because he too recognizes the power this boundary field possesses. This boundary field doesn't just drain one's strength. Once activated, it will literally dissolve all the people within it. There are boundary fields that drain physical and mental strength from people within them, but the boundary field laid out over this school is on a completely different level. This is a soul leader. It is a blood fort that dissolves people within it and claims the souls that seep out. Since ancient times, souls have been hard to handle. Even though they're believed to exist and are necessary for magic, only one Mudgets has ever understood the soul. Souls are only things to be investigated, or things to be moved into containers. It's incomprehensible, not merely s to suck them out, but also to collect them in one single place. It's because a Mudgets has no use for them, even if one were to collect this unconvertible energy. If there's a reason, it must be. Yes, it must be! I ask coldly. あ、それは基本的に霊体だと言っただろう。故に食事は第二ないし第三要素となる。Yes, to strengthen your servant, you must attack people indiscriminately. Very good point. Hmm. Acha is saying that if we want to win, I should kill people and steal their strength. How simple. I already knew that. That's why I think I know which path I'm going to choose. That annoys me. I say so while staring at the mark. For some reason, Archer sounds happy as he confidently answers. I approach the mark and extend my left arm. The magic crest on my left arm is the Book of Magic, passed down the Tosaka family. I switch on my sense. I push magical energy into the, my magical crest. Read the part that explains the elimination of boundary fields, and all I have to do is activate it. Eliminate surgical extraction second section. I touch the surface with my left hand and let my magical energy flow out This will at least wash the color off this mark, but Suddenly as this has stopped the erasure of the boundary field the voice echoes over I Quickly stand up and turn around The child of light Kubulin. I quickly stand up and turn around on top of the water tower. In the sky, ten meters away, a guy is looking down at me. Deep ultramarine that melts into the night. His grin is wild and his a bestial smell carries on the wind. The stare of the beast is a cool one. The man in blue looks at me like an old friend, even in this situation. <laughs> Badass. Casual, but his voice is filled with murderous intent. Sky can see Archer. 
でそれがわかるお嬢ちゃんは俺の敵ってことでいいのかな<笑> My spine freezes a normal light tone of voice and it's colder than anything I've ever heard scary enough to make me vomit I can't tell how I should move or what my best course is But my reason is telling me absolutely to not fight this man right here. Oh, the man raises his arm. It happens in an instant. The arm that held nothing until now. Gay bulge, no homo. Now holds a red weapon, two meters long. Holy fuck, what a bulge. Ha, I jump to the side without thinking. I can't spare the time to consider that I can't jump full force while on a rooftop. I jump, I just jump with the full force to the side as if trying to smash the fence. Watcha! A whirlwind brushes past my hair. Barely made it. <laughs> he rushed me in an eye blink and mercilessly slashed at the space I just occupied. <laughs> nice facts, Kubulin. I knew you would recognize that. The blue whirlwind pursues me. Yeah, he acknowledges the thighs. That there are no escapes. The fence is behind me. To my sides. No, I won't make it. Yes, he's the Klein! My response is fast. I run the magical crest on my left arm and assemble the magic in a single measure. It lightens my body and adjusts the gravity. In this instant, my body becomes light as a fetter, and I j leap. leap. I jump over the fence and fall from the rooftop. The wind and pressure push against my body. 15 meters to the ground, 1.7 seconds until landing. I am a fucking physics major. No, that's too slow. He'll catch up. I let Archer take the impact of the landing and start to run as soon as my feet touch the ground. First, I have to change the location. We have to go somewhere where we can move around freely, not a small place like a rooftop. We have to move to a large field with no obstacles to play to archers and my strengths. Haha! <laughs> I run from the rooftop to the playground in less than seven seconds. It's more than a hundred meters, and my speed is so fast that normal people would only see a blur. But that's. <laughs> Ku Bulin is truly a man of culture. Meaningless against the servant. At the moment I step back, Archer steps in front of me, taking form. A cloudy night. In Archer's hand is a short sword that reflects the weak moonlight. The man crooks his mouth. A large whirlwind. That's the weapon swung at me on the rooftop, the bloody red crimson lance that tried to mercilessly slaughter me. <laughs> Who the hell are you? There's no sign of his previous casual demeanor. In response to Lancer, full of murderous intent, Archer remains silent. The distance between the two is about five meters. The weapon in Lancer's hand is only about two meters. For that man with the bestial smell, I feel like the remaining three meters are meaningless. Archer doesn't respond to the steering voice either. Confronting each other strangely are red and blue. The two counterfeit colored knights are already watching for the other's clinching blow. <laughs> Archer does not respond. There's nothing to say to an enemy he must defeat. That steel back of his 
to declare so. Seems to declare so. That makes me realize I'm being stupid. Archer is just waiting for my word, my command. I talk to his back without approaching him. Was that a laugh? He grins as if to answer my words, and the Red Knight dashes forward. This scene is badass, and I love the music that's gonna transpire. Twirling gusts of wind! Short sword in hand, and the red bullet launches! Bakana! <laughs> what meets him is a blue spear thrust. If the dashing archer is a raging wind, the responding spearhead is a divine wind! Watch out! The sword is swung, a swing to deflect the thrust. Archer parries the thrust of the high speed lance with his short sword. The one in red stops. The enemy did not permit Archer's rush. The enemy doesn't even let him get within two meters the range of the spear. For a long weapon, distance is always preferred. As Lancer has a weapon almost two meters long, he only needs to attack when the enemy comes into his range. Thrusting at an approaching enemy is easier than moving out yourself. But even so, Lancer closes the distance himself and doesn't allow Archer to move forward. His temper is like a burning fire. Lancer closes in with each blow, with no thought of stopping. With a long weapon, it's suicidal to close into an enemy. The spearman's tactic is to use their long range to defeat the enemy and win the battle. So as Lancer is just advancing unchecked, he doesn't have a chance of winning. But that's just by the book. Lancer's lance shows no vulnerabilities as it, sh as it strikes for the throat, shoulders, forehead, and heart. Thrusts so fast, even the after images are blurred. As each strike of his lance repels, rebuffs, and pushes back, Archer, any one of his thrusts could be a called a final blow. But even as a bowman, Archer is a servant. No ordinary attack can be a final blow. Ha! Huh. Having repelled the lance aimed at his forehead, Archer closes in with speed superior to Lancer's lance. Based on its shape, you might think that the main attack of a lance is a thrust, but the basic strength of a lance is in swings. This is because a wide swing using its long range does not allow the enemy to dodge it by stepping back. A partial retreat does not allow escape, and an attempt to counterattack will only result in a slashed stomach. <coughs> but simply going forward will end up in a smashed rib from the long shaft of the lance. Archer and Lancer are similarly built. On top of that, it's hard for Archer with no heavy armor to step into range of a lance. Swung like a whirlwind. <coughs> but thrusts are a different story. A blazing fast thrust certain to strike you is, a di is certainly scary. But as long as the attack targets a point, there are many ways to avoid it once you see it. As Archer did just then, hitting the shaft of the approaching lance to redirect it slightly creates an opening. It must be because he underestimated a bowman. The advantage of a long weapon is the length and freedom of its range. Once Lancer has discarded these advantages himself, his defeat is... Hmm. The one in red stops. A nightmare like time is reversing. The thrust is faster than the previous ones. Bakana! Archer tries to parry the blow, but he gets flicked away, along with his weapon. There are no openings in Lancer's attack. Not just that, the thrusts increase in power and speed without limit, and it becomes a final blow even for a servant. <coughs> we were the ones that underestimated him. For that servant, for Lancer's weapon, there are no general rules about lances. Who could ever parry continuous attacks without even space to breathe between them? Archer manages to retreat a bit and parries, and as a result, the distance between them opens a little. That distance. Lancer uses that distance as a runaway to launch an even more powerful attack. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. The, raising, the raging continuous attack is only a repetition of that. But the blows themselves are godlike! Ten blows already! No, it must actually be many more times than that! The heavy rain of Lance pours with yet more strength trying to skewer Archer to death. 
It's not fast, but it's it's just skill! It thrusts like a waterfall with no change in speed. What can Archer do as he's now on the defensive? With such a short sword, he can only parry the lance! He has no way to close on Lancer, and he continues to retreat. Humst! A vacuum of steel unfolds. Support! I have to back up Archer, but my throat won't respond. My magic has poor aim! Unless Archer gets away, far away from the Lancer. From the Lancer, I will hit him with my final magic as well. With my magic as well. Such an opening would only increase Lancer's advantage. And besides, frankly, I'm captivated. This is a battle between servants. This is the Holy Grail War itself, where we use heroic spirits, the highest rank of a familiar, whom we would never otherwise obtain. Savants. Familiars of different classes that only obey the seven masters. That obey the seven masters. These are the highest rank familiars called heroic spirits that the Holy Grail summons. So it's misleading to call them familiars. Well, originally, familiars were just beings that ran errands for the mudgets. Imagine perhaps a cat in boots, or a cute white bird, or a black dog that doesn't obey its master. Something like that. Or something like that. Familiars that were mere mudgets can summon. Familiars that a mere mudgets can summon are of that level. Familiars are just familiars. They are only mascots that run errands for their masters. So they cannot be being stronger than their masters, no. But savants are different. They are the most powerful beings. Even for sorcerers, of which there are only five in this world. It would probably be impossible to form a contract with them. It's not that the summoning is hard or that the ability of the servant passes that uh, surpasses that of the mudgets. No. No. The servants themselves are beings above magic. I'll make it clear. Servants are heroes from the past. Myth, legend, fable, history. Fiction or not, the superhuman beings who gain concrete existence in folklore are what we call heroes. A hero that becomes eternal in people's minds is no longer human after their death and is promoted to another form of existence, a higher plane of evolution. Humans who bring about miracles, save people, and achieve great deeds are called heroes even after their death. After being so called, they are promoted to heroic spirits after their death and become guardians of humanity. It doesn't matter whatever, whether these people existed in reality or only in stories. It is people's minds that create a hero. People's wishes that this is how things should be give them form and set them up as real. Authenticity does not matter. They can have form as long as they have fame as a legend and people have faith. The ultimate ideals humans have created, the human... The greatest human pe people have created. These are not. These are the heroes, the heroic spirits. And of course, since they are human, beyond human, they cannot be controlled by humans. The mudgets usually borrows their power only to mimic them. They cannot summon the heroic spirits themselves, but the Holy Grail made that impossibility into reality. It summons the heroic spirit beyond human control and turns it into a familiar obedient to the master. That nonsense is proof that the Holy Grail is almighty. And with the passing of years ignored, the heroic spirits are summoned. The most recent from a hundred years ago, the oldest from the ancient days. The seven heroic spirits obey each of the seven masters, protect them and eliminate the masters of the enemy. Heroes from every age and country are revived into the present day to kill one another for supremacy. That is why this ritual is called the Holy Grail War. Say hi, Senso. Watch out! But it seems the Holy Grail has its limits too. Even when the Holy Grail cannot indiscriminately call onto the, the spirit like beings. Just as a form invented by humans is required for the imaginary sixth element known as the devil to take form. The heroic spirits also need a form to live in this world. That form is their temporary name, and the way they exist in this world. The Holy Grail has furnished classes so that the heroic spirits may take form more easily. And it only summons the heroic spirits 
that match these classes. It's like a passport to the present as it sets up a role as a familiar in advance. By allowing the summoned heroic spirit to take on that role, it helps the spirit to take form. If there are seven masters chosen by the Holy Grail, there are also seven servants obeying those masters. There are seven furnished classes. Knight of the Sword, Saber. Knight of the Lance, Lanza. Knight of the Bow, Archia. Mounted Soldier, Lyda. Mudget's Caster. The Silent Killer, Asashin. Mad Warrior, Bazaka. Only the heroic spirits with attributes of these servants are summoned to the present to obey the master and become a servant. That is the Savanta system. A summoning and contract with the heroic spirit beyond human control to win the miracle beyond human grasp. The ultimate competition held only on this ground. The one, the only, holy grail war. Wapa! <laughs> A loud crash. The short sword that deflected Ma Lancer's lance flies from the archer's hand. This is Lancer's technique. A straight thrust that turns into a sweep at Archer's wrist. It was a blow Archer could not avoid even had he been seen it coming. There is no effective way of parrying a lance with a sword. A strong rebuff only results in a stronger counterattack, and a weak rebuff does not create any openings. The important aspect of the battle between a sword and a lance lies in defeating the enemy when he is at the wrong range. Manuke. Idiot. There is no hesitation in Lancer. His movement to push Archer back stops. He must intend to end the match in a single instant. The stare of the firmly placed Lancer and the swordless Archer clashes. In that instant, the lance is thrust just like a flash of light. It can't even be seen. Forehead, neck, and heart. Three shots are launched. Any one a fatal blow. What? But... The flash too fast to see is repelled by a shining blade. In Archer's hand is the short sword again. A sword like before, a Chinese sword like a hatchet. But the biggest difference is... Crap! Two swords! A pair of swords. In his hand are matched swords, mirror images of each other. Lancer's lance flies. As if to finish Archia off, the lance moves faster and faster. Archia defends with a burning spirit. His hawk-like eyes say that he will not retreat anymore. No, that he will only advance from now on. The clashing sounds are like a well-orchestrated music. Two steels clanging against each other. The spark clashes, increase in rhythm without pause. The battle of the two is like a vacuum. It sucks in the air around them, and it seems like anything approaching them would be cut to pieces. In reality, it only lasts an instant. But for me, looking on, it seems to take an infinitely long time. Lancer tries not to let Archer near him, while Archer advances using his swords as a shield. Over a hundred blows have been thrown, and Archer loses a sword every time, but it's only for a moment as Archer has a sword in his hand, in the next instant, forcing Lancer back a little uh, each time. Lancer finally admits his carelessness, that even though he doesn't know who, he, uh, who is before him, he will be the loser if he dismisses him as a mere bowman. Wapa, bitch. The distance widens. Probably to recover, Lancer puts a large distance between them. His speed is extraordinary. Archer's charge was out of this world, but it was still slow compared to Lancer's. The movement of his retreat had panther-like speed and agility. Lancer mutters in irritation. It's more like confusion. No, it's more like confusion. I feel the same way. According to Father, a servant carries only one weapon. Their weapon is filled with magical energy, so it's not something that can be created one after another like Archer was just doing. Servants are heroes that sublimate their spirits after death, equaling the heroic spirits. To 
put it in another way, they're like devils or angels. They're powerful familiars on their own, but their most powerful weapon is their proof of heroism. A magical item called their Noble Phantasm. A Noble Phantasm is a weapon or armor that the servant used when they were a hero, and is treated as a last resort. Their Noble Phantasm is the one and only weapon as a, for a servant. This is because the Noble Phantasm is an ultimate weapon without equal. The lance that Lancer is using will allow, will show its power as a Noble Phantasm when Lancer deems it necessary. A Noble Phantasmer is an impressive weapon by itself, but its true ability is to release, release all its power using its true name. Heroes weapons which rule over all others and which have killed dragons and gods. Servants activate their Noble Phantasms using their magical energy. It's much like magic. Servants recreate the destruction in Legend using their Noble Phantasm as a catalyst. Noble Phantasms are never disposable. The swords that Archer brought out must be excellent, but they, are, they cannot be his Noble Phantasm. He is the servant, Asha. So the Noble Phantasm he conceals must be a bow. <laughs> Talking crap, you cheater. <laughs> Look at his face, bro. He's shitting himself right there. Archer's out here like... <laughs> I like it. Lancer's irritation is understandable. Even though Lancer fought as a spearman, Archer fended him off as a swordsman. Which means Archer hasn't shown any of his abilities yet. So it's natural for Lancer to feel ghastly. I don't fucking know. <笑>そういう君は分かりやすいな。総兵には最速の英雄が選ばれると言うが、君はその中でもエリスグリだ。これほどの創始は世界に3人と言い前。加えて、獣のごとき貧相さといえば、おそらく1人。ほう、よく言
Archia says calmly. Well, we were certainly saved, but... My mistake, I didn't notice my surroundings because I was preoccupied with Lancer. Hey, Archer, what were you doing? Can't you see I'm resting since I'm free now? You can't do that, what about Lancer? He went... He went after that guy, he saw us, so Lancer probably went to eliminate him. For an instant, my thoughts stop. Follow Marcher, I'll catch up right away! Archer goes after Lancer immediately, damn. How stupid of me. I curse my carelessness. It's the rule of Magi to eliminate any witness, which is why. If one didn't want to do that, one just had to allow no witnesses. I've done that until now, so why do I have to make a mistake today of all days? A night where even the moonlight is obscured. A student is lying on the cold hallway floor. Cold hallway floor, and the archer is standing still. An archer is. He is staring silently at the student. A smell hits my nose. The blood on the floor makes clear that it's the smell of death. Paolo Macha. Lancer will probably go back to his master. This won't be worth it unless we at least find out what his master looks like. Archer goes after Lancer. I'm left alone with the student lying on the floor. I can't look straight at him, but I must. This is my fault. This must. This is my fault. This is my fault. Ever since I was a child, ever since I became the successor of Tosaka, I've been preparing for something like this. There's no good or evil for Magi. I've always told myself that this road only has my blood and the blood of others, so... One shot from Lancer's lance, huh? You can't be saved with your heart pierced. I don't know how long it's been since Lancer killed him. Was he lucky or unlucky to be pierced through the heart? I guess Lancer's attack isn't a simple external wound, as the flow of blood from the rupture isn't too severe. It's not too severe, but it's all over when the brain doesn't get any more blood. No, basically, if his heart were pierced, he should have died instantly. But it's amazing. He isn't dead yet. Yes. He's still breathing faintly as if to give his last scream. But that will only last a few more seconds. He can't heal his own wounds, and I don't have enough power to save him either. I try to touch the head facing the ground and realize my fingertips won't move. They're trembling. I wonder why. I'm used to such things. I've had to make these decisions, these kinds of toys. Ah, fuck. I've had to make these kinds of choices many times before. I've lost many things due to my mistakes and selfishness. That's why I'm ready for a day like this. So why? Why am I so angry at myself? I control my trembling fingers and f my failing knees with my will and look at the face of the student. A huge smacking sound. It really feels like I've been hit on the head with a hammer. I grit my teeth, not to suppress my trembling. I'm really pissed off. Why is it him? Why did he have to, why did it have to be him? I'm not mad at Lancer for killing the witness quickly and perfectly, just as a ser servant should do. I'm just angry at him for staying late at this place on this day. Sakura's face flashes in my mind. She will definitely cry, and I recall one red-tinted day after school. A long time ago. A distant sunset. Someone always running alone and a boring girl staring at that from far away. And before me, the corpse of someone who happened to get involved. There is a way. I might fail and lo my, lose my last resort in the process, but there is still a way. No, I'll lose my last resort whether I succeed or fail. So the result for me won't change. It's a mistake. The fact of his death is already determined. It's my fault for not noticing the things around me. It's his fault for unluckily staying late. 
And yet... So I don't need to go that far. Yes, because of this. This is what my father, who gave me nothing else, left for me. Just for me. A powerful chunk of magical energy. A reliable last resort to win through this battle. A precious, precious thing just for me. So what, idiot? I shake the feeling off and kneel in front of the one who will become a corpse in another second. Man, I've done it. The pendant in my hand becomes lighter. My father's memento is draining almost to emptiness and falls onto what used to be a dying body. Well, it can't be helped. Yes, it can't be helped. I didn't have the power or skills to revive someone with a damaged heart, damaged blood vessels, and on the verge of brain death on top of that. That's why I needed to make up for my lack of skill with this powerful object. It's lucky he was still breathing. If he was completely dead, no amount of magical energy could have revived him. But since he was still alive, I just did what I could and ended up saving his life. It would have been awful if I had failed, but since I succeeded, I guess it's alright. Yeah, I feel fulfilled to be honest, so this wasn't a ba such a bad experience. I'm just bluffing. Let's go, what's done is done. I have to head back before he wakes up. Yes, there's no need for me to stay here any longer. Acha should be following Lancer, so I should go home by myself. On my way back, I remember, I left the pendant at school. Just a pendant, now that the magical energy has been drained out of it. Oh well, I have no more use for that pendant. Sure, it might have been a bit of... Uh, it might have a uh, bit of magical energy left in it, but surely less than 10 jewels I have. What my father intended to leave for me was enough magical energy to win the Holy Grail War. So now without magical energy, that thing is meaningless. I entered the house without saying anything and sit on the sofa. Archa isn't back yet. I sigh and listen to the clock for a few minutes. Huh? I have to switch gears. What am I doing? Daydreaming after a battle like that. I jump up and brew some tea. There's so many things to, th to think about. Most importantly, the servants. I have just witnessed a battle between servants I had previously only understood intellectually. Lancer, huh? I panicked when he almost used his noble phantasm, but I would have found out his identity if he had not used it. If he had used it. The easiest way to beat an enemy servant is to learn their identity. Ignoring for the moment the idiot who doesn't even know his own identity. The biggest, the biggest weak point of a servant is their true name. Discovering the servant's true name, in other words, figuring out their identity, should let you take a guess at what kind of noble phantasm they might have. It goes without saying, but since servants are heroic spirits, they have a legend associated with them. If you figure out their legend, you should be able to figure out most of their abilities. Servants are called by their class names, because they want to hide their true names. Because the more famous a hero is, the more people know about their weapons and their weaknesses. A heroic spirit that becomes a servant never gives out their true identity. The only ones that know the servants' identities are the masters. There's even a tactic understanding that the masters hide their servants' identities while trying to discover the identities of the others. This is the fifth Holy Grail War. The qualities of the servants are determined by the ranks of the summoned heroic spirits. It goes without saying that the more famous heroes and the heroes with better weapons are stronger. But it's difficult to summon such heroic spirits. To summon a heroic spirit, one must have a connection with them, such as a weapon they use during their lives. Even with the magic association, has a, uh, even the magic association has a few of such things. 
I'm interested that they translated it like that. Normally they say Mudgets Association, but now they're saying Magic Association, whatever. So generally one will summon a heroic spirit that suits them, like I did. A servant's strength is determined by the rank of the heroic spirit. But it's not that simple as even the most powerful heroic spirits may have a hard time depending on the character they are signed to. <sighs> that is because of the special abilities assigned to each class. The possibility of the weak defeating the strong. The seven classes each have a different additional ability. And one even has a chance of defeating an opponent of higher rank depending on the ability's affinity. To take an example, an infamous hero... Infamous hero has defeated a great hero four times in the past. As far as I know, the most powerful servant is Saber. In all of the previous four wars, Saber has made it to the final fight. It is said that the three classes, Saber, Lanza, and Archer, have, the strong ma have strong magical resistance. To put it simply, magic is pretty much useless against them. It's because they are fighters who have fought through the Age of Myths when magics were used wisely, widely. Magics in that Magi use now would probably dissipate just by touching them. Anyway, that's why these three classes are considered the basics and the bests. Another that's worthy of mentioning is the servant Bazaka. The heroic spirit summoned into this class loses their sanity. Just as the name implies, they, are, they become mad, a warrior puppet of their master. They benefit from the. They benefit from this. Uh, the benefit from this is a strengthening of their power, far exceeding the powers they had when alive. However, the more powerful a servant becomes, the greater the burden it imposes on the master. In the past, masters who summoned Bazakas couldn't con control their rampaging servants and destroyed themselves by running out of magical energy. No exceptions. The winners and losers of the Holy Grail War are largely determined by the abilities of the servants. Well, I expect there uh, are ways to win it by the master's efforts, but it is basically a fight between the servants. That is why a master should be very careful when summoning a servant. I silently considered the plans we should make from now on. The clock fixed already, strikes eleven while I do so, an archer comes home. I'll come back. How did it go? I'm just gonna let them speak right now because I am super tired. <laughs> I need a break. But this is about to end soon, as I expected. Lancer was alone, and it seems his master isn't the type to show up for battles personally. Yes, there's no way uh, everything will go as I might hope. So it can't be helped. Let's consider what happened tonight as a tuition fee for the lessons learned. Archer protests silently that we should do so. I see. I guess I look depressed. そんなわけないでしょ。私が打って出ないのはね、単に無駄で回したくないだけなんだから。うん。無駄で回したくない。だって、まだマスターの数が揃ってないでしょ。今夜のは山梨だったけど、回線の合図があるまで戦わないわ
幼い頃からマスターになるべく育てられそれに従ってきたのだろう当たり前じゃないそれはいきなりマスターに任命される魔術師もいるそうだけど私は別よ遠坂の人間にとって聖杯戦争は何代も前からの悲願なんだからそうだろうなら目的が塔にあるはずだ私はそれを聞き忘れていた主の望みを知らなければ私も剣を預けられないリンそれで君の願いは何だ願いそんなの別にないけど何あのあおアーチャーズ making a funny face そんなはずはあるまい聖杯とは願いを叶える万能の杯だマスターになるということは聖杯を手に入れるということだというのに叶える願いがないとはどういうことだアーチャーズ asking with a serious expression Oh, I see. A master's wish after obtaining the Holy Grail isn't irrelevant to the servant. But it's strange. Father said that servants have wishes as well, but that is only that is only their wish. I don't think Archer should be concerned because I don't have any wishes. Alright, if you don't have a specific wish, why not wish for something ambiguous like ruling the world? あのねアーチャー世界ってのはつまり自分を中心とした価値観でしょそんなものは生まれた時から私のものよそんな世界を支配しろって言うんなら私はとっくに世界を支配している Hey now Archer the world the world is just another word for the things you have you value around you right that's something I've had since I was born if you tell me to rule such a world I already rule it that's a very famous quote from Rin I see like Rin accounts and this people who stand Rin, they sometimes they have that fucking quote in their bio or something like that. Or I don't know, but that, that quote is very famous from Tosaka Rin. And it's a good quote. I agree with that. That's a very powerful quote that's been woven into this and shouldn't make light of it. That's a good ass quote. That's some real shit right there. And that really defines her as a character. As a strong character. Is a powerful character and is a respectable character, a wise character. She might be a little tsundere that goes like, ah, urasai, blah, blah, blah. But she has wisdom to her. And as I just said, like three times, she's powerful and elegant. And I really love her. This is, this is wife material. I, I, I want a wife like this because listen, the thing about, I'm not going to say Sakura is like this because I believe she's a very strong person as well, even though she's shy and stuff. Because if you know what she goes through, man, if you call her weak, you're a fucking loser. She is not weak at all. But let's say like, um, I don't know, like this character isn't weak either. She's pretty strong, but like, she develops into someone strong. But let's say like a Hinata from Naruto, how they're like strong and shy. Not strong, but like at the beginning, at least she was like weak and kind of needs to be taken care of and shy. It's like, I used to think that was hella Wifu worthy, but it's like, like, if you actually think of it in terms of, would you want this character to be your life, wife, unironically? You gotta think about this for a second. Do you want someone who's weaker and needs to be taken care of and shit to be your wife? You want someone who's strong, does not take no shit from anyone, and can hold down the fort when you're not around. You have kids with that person, you want her to be able to take charge and not only raise them, but protect them and protect herself. You want someone who is a force to be reckoned with, but at the same time, does not let that strength compromise her womanliness and her elegance. You don't want her to become a man, but you know what I mean? I think Rin is just like that, and she's wise, she's intelligent. You want someone wise, because as I said, they teach your kids. Like, you're not always going to be around, so you want someone else giving your kids good ideal. You see this fucking quote right here? This quote is someone who's gonna teach your kids good ideals. This is a good woman to procreate with. I sound weird as shit saying that, but I'm just trying to say this is a wife right here. You might think someone who's more like, I don't know, even like Sa Sakura where they're gonna take care of you and shit. And yes, that's very important too. But being able to take care of herself and being able to have wisdom like this and strength like this is a big thing I value as well. 
this is why Rin is a fucking fantastic character and a fantastic just person. If she was a real person, I would respect her. I really would. She's fucking awesome. So that's my take on that famous quote of hers. Archer looks at me with a trouble ex troubled expression. I'm amazed. The guy really is hard-headed. <laughs> yeah, cause she's strong. She don't need that shit. She's a she's obtaining it to fulfill her family's long wishes of obtaining it. She don't give a fuck. She doesn't need some petty ass wish. <laughs> this shows the depth of her character, man. She is awesome as well. Don't underestimate this character. Do not make light of this character. She is fucking fantastic. I don't understand. For what then do you fight? To fulfill my duty. I fight because there's a battle. Take whatever I can get. I'm an Holy Grail. I can use it. When I find it. Look at that. She has a sense of duty. And she also has a sense of the process. I gotta do one thing at a time. So I have a duty to fulfill. I gotta do things one, at a, one by one. Take it day by day. And when I get the Grail, I'll figure out what to do with it when I have it. There's plenty of things that I could do with the Grail. But why waste my time lamenting in it now, when I don't even have it? She is wise! I don't think anyone has ever doubted that she's wise. But I feel like some people underlook just how much wisdom she has. Especially for a woman of her age. I know she's obviously smart, she's a mudget, so you're not going to be dumb in a mudget uh, most of the time. But really, she has wisdom, because I would say book smarts are a lot different than street smarts, and she has pure wisdom. These aren't, this isn't wisdom, what she's saying isn't things that you're going to get out of reading a magic book. This is just things that you're going to get from being a smart intellectual person and having wisdom to you, having character to you. And she truly embodies that. If I had to make an anime review on Rin, I would bring up all of these points. And you're seeing it first hand on display right here so really i want you to appreciate how good of a character this is i really do so you're saying i'm fighting the win archer archer's shoulders slump maybe he's disappointed in my opinions but it seems he's finally relaxed and I give up? You're certainly a worthy master for me. Yeah, dang right she is, man. Can't hear her say things like that and say that she's not worthy. You better fucking say that. That's Tosaka Rin! Put some respect on her name. I find it hard to deal with that kind of comment, so I'd wish he'd stop saying such things. <laughs> Why am I a worthy master for you? I look away because I'm embarrassed. I find it hard to deal with Archer because he speaks frankly like this even though he's so cynical. He's just real man, he's honest. But well, I'm honestly happy that he trusts me. Good. I trust Archer and he trusts me. I don't think this sense of solidarity is a bad thing. Well then, let's take a break. Oh, that overused Gucci watch. I traded it for some Gucci sandals. I didn't need that shit anymore. It was so last year. Well said. 
So saying, Archer takes out the pendant I left at school. Ah, how sweet of him. Aww. As if he's embarrassed, Archer looks away as he hands me the pendant. You can really see where his character comes from in moments like these. Ha ha. No spoilers this time, even though I spoiled it earlier twice in the previous episodes. Oh yeah. It was really just in the first episode, but it was twice. <laughs> I accept it. To be honest, I didn't know if I should be embarrassed or cool about it. The pendant uh, is as it was. As expected, there's no magical energy left in it. Empty of magical energy, it's just an expensive but ordinary jewel and it doesn't hold any power, but it is your father's memento, friend. And your father is not around anymore, so cherish it. I would. But as Archer would put it, even if there's no power left in this pendant, it still has meaning as something my father specifically left for me. And maybe I can just laugh off the fact that I helped that guy by sacrificing my trump card. Something clicks in my head. I wasn't thinking straight back then, because of my regret. But thinking about it calmly, I missed something. He saw us, so it'll be dangerous unless we adjust his memory. Basically, Lancer prioritized eliminating the witness over his battle with us. Lancer's thinking probably matches with his masters. Matches his masters. So if such a master finds out the, the guy they killed didn't die, what would he do? He wouldn't let the guy keep on living! I get it from my sofa. It's been three hours since then. I might not make it, but after all, I did. I have to make it on time. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know if this is actually a scene, but I'm just going to call this the Kubulin theme, because I'm pretty sure this, uh, this is the theme that appears when he first pops up to and starts talking to Rin on the roof rooftop. I run through the night. Fortunately, I know where his house is. I know where he lives. No, I didn't look it up. I'm not a stalker. I'm not Kyohime. But it just happens that I, an acquaintance of mine goes there a lot. Haha, <laughs> wink wink, nudge nudge, I wonder who that is. Though I've never been there myself, honestly. You're just taking on unwanted troubles. Ah, she has no interest in cooperating, but he must anyway. He was against saving the guy when he was dying, and he's against me going off to help him right now. But fuck it, we're doing that because we're good people and, uh, you know, we don't want to We don't want to let the good deed we committed go to waste. Fuck that shit. Okay. It's midnight under the cloudy night sky. We reach the Japanese-styled house. There's no sight of anyone in this house on the edge of the residential district. There aren't many houses around it and there's no one to come and help if something happens here. My breath is white. A wind starts to pick up. It must be quite strong, as the clouds start to drift fast. The supposedly warm wind of Fuyuki sends chills down my spine, making me tremble. Even if Fuyuki City is considered warm, it's still cold on the hill. The air around here is frozen. I strain my ears in the cold atmosphere. In the frozen feeling, I feel a small sense of an enemy. I bite my lip. His presence is perceptible. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, side of the wall. On this wall. Lancer is in the house already and about to kill the same guy again. Who has just come here home without a clue as to what happened. Just as I'm about to command Archer to go in. A bright white light. Like a fallen sun comes from within the, ha the house. The presence is eclipsed by another presence. Which is eclipsed by another presence. And then another presence. And another... Okay. And the power... Uh, the wave of power of the servant lancer is consumed by an even larger wave. The instantaneous explosion... EXPLOSION! Of ether gives the spiritual being a body. Summoned to overpower lancer. <laughs> Uso! I can only mother, but it's true. To prove it, Lancer jumps over the wall and leaps away as if fle fleeing from this place. <laughs> <laughs> Lancer 
deep. Ah, Chia answers calmly. I've lost my normal judgment. That's why I didn't even consider the obvious event that would follow. The wind blows strongly. Clouds covered the sky like an umbrella. The unlit suburbs are enclosed by darkness. And the servant jumps over the wall, coming down like a demonic bird. Acha has reacted already, but I couldn't react. That was my mistake. The battle ended with that small opening not lasting even a second. It might have been only for a, sec uh, a second for me, but, that, uh, but for that servant, it was an opening that couldn't be ignored. A sword rushes for me. Acha! Archer pushes me aside and the servant slashes him. It happens in an instant. Archer, who handled Lancer's fury of attacks beautifully, has been taken down with one blow. But I make it in time this time. Just as the enemy servant is about to cut off Archer's head with her blade, I forcibly remove him. A pain in my right hand. It must have been an excessive command. So a command spell has disappeared from my hand. Now there's only one remaining. But this is for the best. Rather than having Archer die, I would prefer to lose one or two command spells. Giving no consideration to Archer's disappearance, the servant attacks me. Don't underestimate me. I take from my pocket a topaz with a wind spell stored in it. Then I launch it all the man magical energy it contains at her without pro processing it. The thing which can blow away a house without a trace is a bundle of wind spells I've stocked up for a long time. It's one of the ten jewels I've been putting my magical energy into for 17 years without rest. So since you were born? Holy fuck. I'm using all the magical energy stored in it, so even I can't defeat her. It should at least slow her down a bit. I would say, I think she's 18, so pretty much like... She's seven years. I, th I think she's 18. If, she, if she's not, she's 17. But it was at least at the very minimum, since she was one, she was putting energy into that shit. So fuck. Okay. No, not even that. It did nothing. The, whir the swirl of wind that instantly tears apart anything caught within it disappears like a magic trick the instant it touches the servant. Mm hmm. Such a strong magic resistance. Mere magical energy from a mudgets cannot hurt the servant. So this is it. She cannot be hurt by magic and I've lost the protection of Acha, so I can't stop this servant. I barely managed to avoid one blow, but that's all. I look up at this night sky. In it is the figure of cold-hearted death who is looking down at me as I lay miserably on the ground. The wind blows. In between the dark clouds and the spiral sky, the moon shines. The falling moonlight and the beautiful face. This is the servant that drove off Lancer, defeated my archer in one strike, and annulled my magic with no trouble. The, the girl's voice is like a bell. Yes, this voice is like a nightmare right now. It's only natural. The more beautiful my enemy is, the more of a nightmare it is, as I cannot believe the difference in our strength. The point of the sword shines brilliantly. On the verge of death, I understand. With just one look, without proof, this is the card I wanted. The one said to be the strongest of all servants, the hero of the sword. I look up at the moon, accepting my death. There is no time for me to flee or plead for my life. I will die here until Osaka Rin's Holy Grail War will end on the third day. There is only disgrace and regret, and I will probably vanish, bearing a grudge against my enemy. But still, I don't feel anything. Something must really be wrong with me. Even though I'm going to be killed in an instant, I adore her again. That's right. If you ask for regrets, that's it. But I guess it can't be helped, because she's the most powerful servant. Because her figure is just so heartless, so infinitely valiant. And so beautiful. Oh shit. I fucked up. I saw that on my OBS. I tried to drag it to my other monitor. 
Because uh, when it just switched to this, it went to a second monitor. So I tried to put it on the original monitor it was on, and then it start it didn't, like dragged it off the screen. So my bad. That's uh, something I can't really change in the editing, so it's just gonna be fucked up like that. Actually, is the cropping still fucked up? I can't do nothing about this. Yeah, this shit's fucked up. This shit's fucked up on OBS! The ripper boys. Actually, no, it's- Yeah, it is fucked up. Alright, I'm about to do some boof shit. Professional, boys. Professional. Blame Fate Stay Night for this. Blame Fate Stay Night. It had to fucking switch monitors and do some voodoo shit. Bruh. Crop correctly. Boom. Okay, I fixed it. But not before it was already too boofed. For comprehension. Okay, well, that was kind of boof. Okay, just fucking... Yeah, this really couldn't be helped. The only way it could be helped is if... What's it called? Is if pretty much... Um, if I didn't have a layout on OBS and I just did the layout in Vegas and only recorded the game footage, then this could have been prevented, but... Since I put the layout on OBS, since the game reacted like that, it just fucked with the whole cropping. So... That's my bad. Um, I hope you guys don't mind that. There's nothing I could have done about that in that situation, so... We're just gonna have to deal with it. But anyway, the official game has started. If I drag this off of this monitor, will it fuck with it? No, it won't fuck with it anymore. Okay, cool. So, with that being said, this has concluded that episode. The whole prelude for the game has concluded with that. Let me just... Uh... Yeah. I guess that's it, so... Go ahead and leave a like, comment, sub, do what you gotta do, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed, even though that ending was a little poof. And, uh, peace. Also, yeah, I've, I've recorded like three straight of these in a row, so I really did hope you enjoyed, because I'm tired as shit. I work hard. But yeah, peace out, guys.